While Mario Tennis Aces, Crash Insane Trilogy, and Wolfenstein 2 are the summer jams on your Switch, other companies are trying to take your attention to the future. And that's why, once again, we've got seven new Switch games just announced. What's going on, everybody? It's Zach from Switch Force. Gabe is here. Five brand new titles and two really good release date updates. These two games with release dates are very exciting for us and for you. And so, Gabe, we're going to kick it off with those. First up being Dragon Ball Fighters. Yeah, I mean, this game needs no introductions. There was a lot of fan fervor to get this on the platform. Of course, uh, Bandai said, hey, let's make sure the first Dragon Ball game we put on Switch does well. You guys came through. That did well. And now this is coming. Zach, how are you feeling about it? I like it. I thought it played really well at E3. We got a chance to run a couple matches. You absolutely crushed me. I felt very nostalgic. Dragon Ball Z was a big part of my childhood, my middle school years, and I'm pretty pumped to find out that it's releasing on September 28th. That'll be a good game, uh, sort of pre-holiday rush to get on the Switch, and hopefully it does well. Um, and as you mentioned, kind of can continue to reward Bandai Namco for listening to the fans and being involved with the community. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, great for some holiday multiplayer fun uh, when that eventually rolls around. Great game. Indeed. All right, The World Ends With You is something that showed up at a Nintendo Direct earlier this year and then went kind of radio silent. When would it re release? We didn't hear anything at E3. Well, now we have a Japanese release date, and that is September 27th, one day before Dragon Ball Fighters. And I assume that it'll come, maybe not this exact day, but somewhere very similar um, in the West. They also announced this uh, like special edition version that comes with a bag kind of interesting. It's a really good game. Gabe, did you play it back on 3 or on DS? Yeah, this is one of the like favorite DS games I have. It's like a cult classic for a reason. I'm glad that they're remaking it. It's going to give people that maybe were a little young at the time that didn't play it an opportunity to play it and the Switch is such a great platform for games like this and uh, I'm honestly kind of excited to play it again because as you know, Zach, my memory is not the best when it comes to games. So, mm -hmm. it's not going to be a holding new experience, but yeah, I mean, I'm going to have a ton of fun with it. Yes, it's the, the special edition is called It's a Wonderful Bag Edition, which uh, I guess it's a play on It's a Wonderful World, perhaps. Yeah. yeah. Um, but uh, it's a pretty expensive edition that includes a physical copy of The World Ends With You, Final Remix, an art book, a Switch stylus, a figure display, stickers, the game soundtrack, and a tote bag. And that stylus actually could come in handy. I haven't played a single game on Switch with a stylus, but given the touchscreen heavy emphasis uh, here in The World Ends With You, that actually might be a cool way to play, I think. Yeah, I completely agree. Um, I probably am going to forego the stylus and probably just use my finger, but it's okay. I really like it. It's very unique, and even if you're not typically into JRPGs, look at some gameplay, give this a chance. If you didn't experience it back on the DS, uh, it's, it's worth a go because it does do things, I would say, very creatively and very uniquely. I don't know that anything else is like this game, so it's definitely going to be awesome on Switch when it comes September 27th. All right, Gabe, enough of the updates. Let's get something brand freaking exciting now. So you want more third-party stuff on Switch, Gabe? Is that what you've been clamoring for? Uh, you know I clamor for nothing else. Well, third-party is coming in the form of Carnival Games, 2K's premier franchise, making its way to Nintendo Switch this November. $40 on the 6th of November. It sold 9.5 million copies on Wii across the series, and uh, it has 20 games Things that you love, uh, including Ring Toss, Alley Ball Horse Racing, uh, Drone Racing, Cosmic Bowling, and there's four themed alleys for bowling. Gabe, you can bowl in a jungle, on Saturn, in Vulture Gulch, and uh, in a Nuts and Bolts industrial style lane. Yeah, taking you and a family to a carnival is way more than $40, which is what this game costs. <laughs> and you can play this over and over. I wish there was a game that fulfilled my uh, lifelong li uh, dream of becoming a carny. But no, this oh, is... Oh, <laughs> man. That's a different game. Yeah, that's a different game completely. But in the meantime, yeah, participate with your family and all types of uh, local multiplayer fun here. These are the kind of games that I thought may sort of like flood the Switch and they have not yet for the most part so it's interesting to see this one coming i'm curious how it will sell um it is you know a family party game and as nintendo continues to expand its audience and sell more and more switches to more and more people i could see this doing okay the game on the front that appeals the most to me um is the one where you throw the ball and knock down the creepy faces mm -hmm. that's a very scary game from my my chuck e cheese days as a small small child all right also, the basketball game where they make the rim really small and you think you stink even though you're pretty good because it's basically rigged. Yeah. 
All right, Carnival Games. Let us know if you're excited for that one. Um, on the complete opposite end of the spectrum is My Brother Rabbit, which is a very beautiful looking adventure puzzle game set in a surreal world that mixes reality with imagination. A loving family discovers that their daughter has fallen ill. While her parents set out to get her the treatment she needs, her determined older brother turns to the power of imagination to help both of them cope. It's a very sad and somber theme. Like, hey, the parents are leaving and the brother has to basically take care of his sister and he's bringing them joy via imagination. Yeah, I mean, such a very, like... The, the, the art style is what I'm going to talk about. It, like, stands out. You have, like, a, a pear with, like, eyes and a mouth. Like, I'm like, oh, what's happening in this game? But, yeah, like, very, like, creative and imaginative. But, like you said, like, the, the, the actual, like, story aspects of it, like, seem, like, a little somber. But I, I'm I'm confident that it, it'll still be a good time. I like uh, puzzle games. I like adventure games. And uh, this seems like a very cool one. It is definitely gorgeous. It's coming later this year. And it reminds me a lot of um, – there was a movie that Jake was obsessed with when he was a kid – it was, uh, what's it called? Like, Adventure. You're going to blank out on the movie title, and that's okay. I'm going to blank on the title. Help me in the comments if you know the title. But basically, it was about this little girl got, little girl animal got sick, and all of her animal friends had to go find her the medicine. And I cannot remember it, but Jake would watch that movie over and over again. And I didn't like watching it because it made me too sad. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, maybe I shouldn't play My Brother Rabbit. I'm going to play um, it because I am immune to sadness. Hopefully, it'll be good. <laughs> Black Sad Under the Skin is coming in 2019, and this looks like a very different kind of adventure game. It's published by Microids, and it's based on the world of the comic book series Black Sad, um, and players will be able to, for the first time, be the hero, John Black Sad, and uh, he looks like he does investigations, and it is described as a novelesque exclusive adventure um, playing as Private Eye, John Black Sad, a cynical, seductive, and nonchalant anthropomorphic cat <laughs> well i mean the, the screenshot is like a rhino holding a pistol to the back of a cat's head so right it, it, lo it looks very intense um again a very cool art style set in 1950s new york gave basically like didn't you tell me if, if you were not you you would be like a a, a new york gangster yeah like uh, right on the floor that'd be like al capone's best friend i'm yeah, joking so people <laughs> this is this is good for you right. um and it's coming out like i said next year okay let's go to subara city or subara city um this was recently announced it came out on 3ds and now it's coming to switch late summer early fall worldwide and uh, it's a city building puzzle game it actually looks kind of interesting um it's gonna be on the smaller side it's only 500 yen in japan so expect this one only cost a couple of bucks uh, but it has some interesting mechanics to it a little bit of a nice uh view and if that is your kind of thing or if you experience the 3ds version you can now play on switch yeah i mean some of these games that only like cost a few dollars it's very hard to like have any opinions on just because like the the cost is so low that if you have fun for like an hour or two like it's justified so yeah, absolutely. Okay, Gabe, I'm going to give you something that I know is going to appeal to you, and that is the cutest game probably of the year. It is called Nico Tomo, and it is based on the franchise uh, Teddy Together. This time, Bandai Namco is bringing you these very adorable kitten buddies that you can dress up, you can play with, you can teach. They're not really learning to write very well. I don't really know what this screenshot is showing them writing, but they're trying. Um, it has a crossover with uh, Taiko no Tatsujin, which is the drum game that is getting that English language track. Uh, they have a very catchy theme song, and it's coming to Switch and 3DS in Japan in 2018. Well, I don't know if I need to play this game, because I kind of already do all of this with Braylon. I go fishing with him, yeah. I put little cowboy hats on him, I, I chop carrots with him, I do all this stuff, so I already live this life. <laughs> Very, very wonderful. Uh, also, I have solved my own issue, and the movie is called Once Upon a Forest. And it was about a young mouse, a mole, and a hedgehog risking their lives to find a cure for their young badger friend. So, okay. He was poisoned by men. Um, and before we get poisoned by any men, we are going to close out this list and ask you, which game are you most excited for? I think for me, it's probably... It would, like Just based on pure quality, it would be The World Ends With You. I think that game is fantastic, and Final Remix looks pretty cool. Um, the one I'm most likely to play consistently is going to be Dragon Ball Fighters, though. Yeah, I, that's probably where I would fall as well. I am excited uh, for Black Sad as well, because that kind of appeals to me. It's just so unfortunate that it's far away. But yeah, out yeah. of this list, the one that I will probably spend the most time with, uh, it's going to be a toss-up between Dragon Ball and The World Ends With You. Yeah, two really good uh, titles that are coming 
in the ninth month of the year. Let us know your favorite. Maybe it's Carnival Games. I oddly want to play Carnival Games. I don't know why. It's, it's like one of those things where like you can't look away. Um, and again, these they did sell super well. So while I don't want this to be the, the new trend on Switch, I at least welcome 2K bringing something else besides the sports stuff. Yeah. Maybe it leads to more sales and more opportunities for developers uh, and their teams to experiment on the hybrid. In the meantime, everyone, thanks so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe and stay up to date on all the latest and greatest from the Switch and its games. We will keep you covered on every announcement and all the exciting releases and updates. Follow us on Twitter and Discord to stay up to date. Extra good. We'd love to see you there. And until next time, for myself and Gabe, Switch Force out.